Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. I hope you guys are ready to head underwater. Today we are doing some underwater bass fishing. We are comparing Chatterbait trailers. 19 different trailer configurations underwater. Let's go. Chatterbaits are an incredible way to catch bass. You can cover a ton of water, you can mimic all sorts of different things, and you can draw reaction strikes when other baits don't work. Earlier this year, we got on an incredible bite where for over a month, we were catching chatterbait fish nonstop, day after day after day. And it gave us the opportunity to compare trailers, to compare profiles, to compare actions, to the fish, switching between baits while we're getting bit every cast and watching how the reactions change. Well, today we're going underwater to really take a look at some of those things that we learned. Because what we learned from the actual fishing was that our trailers could be broken down into four categories. And I'd never really noticed that before, and I've never heard anyone talk about it before. The chatterbait itself is a great bait. But when you break your trailers out into categories and you understand what they are for, your fishing will skyrocket. So today there are a total of 19 trailer configurations that we're looking at underwater. This is in depth, but it's four categories. Okay, so you've got swim bait style trailers. Baits with a boot tail that actually kick in the water and give a certain type of action. Then we've got crawdad imitating trailers. Those baits that kick and move like a crawfish and emulate that subsurface. Then we've got trailers that are there purely for profile. You're trying to create a shad presence or a bluegill presence or a crappie presence, but a larger bait fish profile. And then we've got trailers whose sole purpose is action. They're designed to move certain ways to get incredible movement, to let the bait flow and react, unlike all of the others, to draw more bites. So what we're going to do is we're gonna head underwater right now. We'll go swim baits first, then craw baits, then profile baits, and then we will end with action baits, which, spoiler alert, is my favorite category. Now, if you don't have time for the entire video, you can't watch 19 trailers underwater, I get it. Open the video description, I'll leave a cut point that will take you straight to the end where I show you my five favorite trailers. My five. If you watch it, you may come out with a completely different list. But I'll give you my five because I know everybody doesn't have the time to watch all these baits run by. But for now, here we go.
Okay, switching from the swim bait style trailers to the crawl profile trailers. Now we're switching from the baits that imitate a crawdad to baits that are going for that overall bait fish profile. These are those baits where profile is everything. They're creating a larger package imitating a panfish or a large bait fish. Now we're headed into my favorite category. These are the baits that are all about action. They're about getting the bait to move and react differently than everything else. If you need a fish to react to your chatterbait, these are your trailers.
all of these different trailers work at one time or another. That's why they're popular. We went with all of the popular trailers, plus a couple of my oddball favorites that I've had success with. Now, when we're done with this video, when we get to the actual end of the video, I'm gonna add in some catches for you. Some fours, five, six, seven pounders eating the chatterbait from that incredible bite we were on this spring because we never even got around to running that footage for you guys and it went on. We have hundreds of catches just stockpiled. It was unbelievable how good that bite was. So we'll run a few minutes of actual fish catching at the end of this video just for fun. But let's talk about those trailers. You might have noticed that with the, the swim bait style trailers, overall, it's not a bad action. But the one that surprises me is the Kitek. The Kitek itself is great for just about everything in bass fishing, but out of the bunch was, I think, the least impressive of the swim bait trailers, which is really interesting. Now, you might have noticed when it was right side up, the reason why it doesn't look right to the eye is that the blade and the tail are going at completely different speeds. When we flipped it upside down, they start matching speed, but the profile still just isn't quite right. Some of the others look a lot better. Now for the crawdad baits, that's an interesting one because they all look great. Like even a sweet beaver where there's really not a lot of kick, it still looks really good. So for me, that category comes down to an overall profile. Which one is the right size with enough movement for what I want? Now for the profile baits, a lot of those baits, again, it's about creating a profile. It's not about action. So most of those are straight retrieve baits. If you start ripping, popping, working them, it doesn't work. It doesn't work with the craw baits or the swim baits either. All of those baits just present an overall image. The last category, those baits that move, that kick, that pulse, that react, not only do they have their own movement, but because they're all slim profiled, they will allow the chatterbait itself to cut and turn and dart and drift and do things that no other bait will do. There's a time and a place where that is the only way to get a consistent bite, but sometimes you need those profiles. So from each one of those categories, you guys are probably seeing some favorites come out. Now with that said, I'll give you my favorites from every category. Let's start with the swim bait category. Now this is the only one where I'm going to cheat. I chose two. The reason why is because they were so different, but they both looked so good. So if I'm imitating smaller bait fish, hands down, that Zayco with that boot tail behind it is the best looking bait. But if I want to catch a bigger fish, if I want to imitate a bigger bait fish, then there was no question that that Gambler Easy was the better bait. It's just a difference in overall size and profile. So both of those are on my list. Now for crawdads, that was probably the toughest category of all of them. I went with the Netbait Packa Slim, okay? And the reason why I chose that, because the Kitek looks amazing. It's got that incredible movement all over the place. It looks so good, but the overall package is quite large. The Cowboy, which has historically been my favorite trailer for this category, it's a consistent movement. There's no change. There's nothing to cause a reaction or to draw a fish to, to decide right now is the time to eat. So I had to bounce around with those, but ultimately that pack of slim is the one that had great action, but it wasn't consistent action. It would do things that were different. One of those arms would catch a little bit of current and it would move differently. And then I liked the overall size of the total package. So that is my new favorite for the craw. For overall profile, it's that one I've been holding the entire time. That's the Big Bite Baits Swim On. 
you talk about a surprising one because in the hand it doesn't look like a whole lot there's not that much going on there but in the water all the almost all of the other profile oriented baits just have a little bit of kick there were a couple others that stood out for me some of them because of how they look underwater and some because of how many fish i've caught on them you'll see some of that at the end uh, but overall that swim on i mean i think it's a slam dunk that one is such a standout from all the others in that overall profile and then last i'm sure you guessed it my favorite from a reaction standpoint as well as an overall if i could only have one chatterbait trailer it is that guy right there that is the hog farmer spunk shad and it's the 5.5 it's the larger profile you get more of that movement and that bait can cut and dart and move and draw reactions. It's not just about that steady chatterbait retrieve. Give that thing some real bumps, give it some snaps, pop that rod tip and watch that chatterbait move and walk and turn and you'll notice a lot of fish catches. You pop, pop that reel and boom, that fish eats it because that bait cuts and darts and they come in and ambush that thing. So overall, that was my winner. Now it was tough in its category because I'm going to say that that super fluke looks really good. And so does the cut Kitek. That's a Kitek where we clipped the tail off. It looks good too, but the Kitek and the fluke both tear up pretty quickly. So you're going through a lot of baits where that spunk shad is holding up. It's a, it's a solid body for one, it's made of a denser material, a stronger material than a Kitek. The fluke is grooved on the bottom. So one fish, two fish, it starts tearing, but man, does it look good. But overall, that spunk shad for the win, in my opinion. Now, I would love to hear your guys' opinion as well. Down below, leave comments, let us know. Also, in that video description, I'm linking all 19 of the trailers. And I'll put them right there in order so they're easy for you to understand by category because you might like a different one than I did. And then if the space allows, I'll give you my favorite colors for all of them as well. Now for the chatterbaits themselves, and then we'll get to some actual fish catches here at the end just for fun. We'll just literally tack them on the end of the video. The actual chatterbaits themselves, I use four different chatterbaits. On the budget end, I use the Chatterbait Custom. The Chatterbait Custom is a little bit cheaper than all the others. It's got a little bit smaller hook, so it's a really good bait. It's a consistent bait. It swims right away. That blade gets moving right away. That's the difference between a quality Chatterbait and a knockoff is how quickly they start and they move. So I love that Custom on a budget and for smaller profiles, pond fishing, bank fishing, places where the bait fish are smaller, the fish aren't quite as aggressive. Those are all great places for that custom. Same deal with this little guy right here. The Stealth Blade is a smaller blade overall and it's made of a clear material. When you feel it in the water, if the chatterbait is going thump, 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 the Stealth Blade is more of a vibration coming through that water. And that vibration is completely different. So really clear water, heavily pressured fish. I've done incredibly well on the stealth blade. Now, interestingly enough, I've also done well, as you'll see, in chocolate milk, stained dirty water on a stealth blade where fish are getting fished quite a bit and I just wanna present something different. Next one is the cross eyes. And again, I'll link all the baits in the description along with all those trailers, but I wanna show you these four different baits. The cross eyes has a keeper on it. And I've found that when I get in really heavy grass, that keeper has helped. It does two things. One, it helps deflect a little bit of grass. Now, a lot of grass on a chatterbait is catching on the blade and nothing's going to change that. But the pieces that catch on the hook are the ones that are the hardest to get off and it helps stop those. So that one has been a great option. And then last 
but not least, of course, the one that we swam all those baits on underwater is the jackhammer. The jackhammer is just the most dialed in, the most refined. It starts vibrating immediately, the fastest of all the baits. It has a premium hook. It has a premium snap. It is your best shot of landing a great big bass when they eat that thing. All four are great options. They apply in different places and you should add at least one of them to your arsenal. Now again, I'll link everything down in the video description. And with that, let's catch a few fish. That's a fish. He's a giant! spot lock us how was that for a quick change guys that is adapting that is figuring it out as you go great big Florida bass Now, why did I add all those catches in? Absolutely no reason at all. It's just fun to watch fish eat these baits. Hopefully you noticed they were on a handful of different baits. A lot of those were spunk shad fish, lots of different colors. Some of them were on some of those profile trailers. Like uh, there were some on that bright orange rabbit ear tail. That thing was working really, really well for me in murky water. 
had some nice fish on that gambler easy i just added those in because it's fun it's fun to see big fish it's fun to see the baits working after you've seen what they can do underwater hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button subscribe to the channel and we'll talk to you soon